Hi everybody, it's Miss Wheat, and today we're looking at our ELA packet for week eight, day four. Week eight, day four. Um, a couple of things. There is so much going on in the activities for today. There is a very involved game that looks super fun, but I'm going to make a um, separate video to, to show you how to play it because I was trying to, it's too much for me to explain. I, I'm not... I can't do it. So I'm going to show you how to play it in another video. I'll post that in a little bit. And then also today for RRW, there's like planning writing and actually writing. So we're going to split those into two days. So today in this video, in this one you're watching right now, we are going to check your phonics work from yesterday. We are going to check your RRW work for yesterday. And we're going to get set up to do our planning for our writing. Two more videos are coming. One video to teach you how to play this um, cool game once Ms. Wheat figures out how to play it. And then um, another video to kind of get you started with your actual writing task. Okay? Cool. Let's, let's get in it. Awesome. All right. So let's look at this one. You can pause the screen if you want. But we were just filling in words to complete the sentences. And the words were from the word bank. Some of these were a little funky. So if you... If there were somewhere you were like, what? I was like that too, but I just did my best. Um, so we've got one. One day the king was in town. Two, a very big crowd came to see him. Three, everybody was on the ground in the grass. Four, big clouds were in the sky. Five, the king had a big crown on his head. Six, it was round. That's describing the crown. That took me a second. Seven, it had pictures of happy dancing clowns on it. Now that one really was tricky for me. But when you look at the picture, which you probably did because you're great readers. But if you look at the picture, you can see that for some reason he chose a crown that has clowns on it. Number eight, my dog started to growl. Number nine, the king must have liked the sound because he started to bark. And number 10, that made the rest of us laugh and howl. Sometimes people use the word howl to mean they were laughing a lot. So check your answers. Little check if you got it right. If you made any mistakes, go ahead and fix them quick. No big deal. And then check out this passage, Lost and Found. Um, your job was to go through and read it and circle all the words that have an OU or an OW feature. Most of the time, they were making the ow sound, but sometimes in words like four, it wasn't, but I still circled it. Um, you can pause and check yours with mine. I found 22. Um, maybe you found 22 also. If you found less than that, see if you can find the ones you missed. And if you found more, maybe double check, but let me know if I missed any. Um, but yeah, there you go, lost and found. And then the last part was to answer three quick questions. So number one, what problem did the boy and his mom have at the camp? Now, I thought they had two problems. So if you said one of these, I think they're both right. One, I said their dog Scout jumped out of the car. Seems like a problem to me. And I also said a problem was it was raining a lot. They wanted to go camp, but it was raining, so it was hard to do lots of the stuff that they planned, I think. Number two, what happened to Scout? He jumped out of the car. And number three, why did Scout look proud? Because he found his family. Awesome. So that's all your work from yesterday. Remember, we are going to um, learn how to play the phonics game for day four in another video. And now let's look at your RRW work from yesterday. Then we'll get started with your writing planning. And then we'll be done for today. So these are those questions where you were getting your answers from a very specific chunk of the text. And this one was asking, what are some popular foods in Mexico and Canada? And this is also the day where Miss Wheat went crazy and I said that you don't need to answer them in complete sentences for a one-time special thing. So I said, in Mexico, food with lots of flavor, sauces, tortillas, tortas, ice cream, small cookies, and in Canada, it tells me they like to eat poutine and maple syrup. So of course they like to eat other things there too, but those are the ones that the text mentioned. Your answer might be a little bit different and that's okay. If it's mostly the same, awesome. 
if it's like really, really, really different, I would say go back and read the chunk of text again and um, see if uh, you can kind of make a little bit more sense of it now that we've talked through my answer. So a little bit different, no big deal. That's just how brains work. Really different means you were probably on the wrong track and so see if you can um, fix it. And of course, let me know if you have questions. The next one told me to check out the text features, especially photographs, captions, and labels. And asked, how did the author use text features to teach you about life in Canada and Mexico? What did you learn? And so I said, and again, this is one where we could have answered this different ways. Here's what I was thinking. Photographs help me know what these places look like and how the people who live in Canada and Mexico look. They show me what the art and food look like and they help me imagine what it's like to live there. Labels help me know what specific things are called. I saw labels for pinata and poutine. Those could have been new ideas for me, so the labels help me know their names. Titles help me know the topic of each chunk. Like there's a section just about food and I learned that from the, from the title. And then there's these cool what do you think captions and they ask me these questions to help me think deeply about what I'm learning and to make connections to my own life. So the text features just build on the text and help me know more and more and more so that my brain can make sense of what I'm learning. If your answers were similar, cool. They could have been different, that's okay. But um, so long as you were thinking about how text features help you as a reader, that is awesome. All right, and then the last one asked, what kind of jobs do people have in Mexico and Canada? Can you give some examples? And I was just looking at the chunk that they showed me. So um, it told me that a lot of people have service jobs to help people in the community. I, I knew that about service jobs from the text. Also, um, jobs like factory workers and silver miners, and then storekeepers, bankers, teachers. These are all specific jobs that that chunk of text told me about. Awesome. One of the other parts was for you to write a summary teaching what you learned in the text. Um, I would love to see your summary if you want to send it to me and we can look, talk about it one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so if you want to talk through your summary, just text it to me, email it to me, and we can look at it together. Um, but I'm going to skip right showing you my summary because it doesn't really matter. What I want to see is, is your summary and what seemed the most important to you. Okay, so now let's look at your ideas for today or what you're working on today. Awesome. Okay, so there's two parts of what we're doing today. First, we're going to look at our different sentence types, which should be a review because we talked about it a lot in second grade. Um, and then we are going to plan our writing to answer the prompt, to answer the question. So strong uh, writers use lots of different kinds of sentences. They don't want every sentence to sound exactly the same way. There's three big sentence types that we love working with in second grade, um, especially in our writing. We've got commands. So those ones give instructions. Um, they often start with an action word. So if I say, stand up. I'm giving you a command, I'm telling you what to do. If I say, pass the bread, please, I'm being polite, but I'm also giving you a command because I'm telling you what to do, okay? Questions begin with who, what, when, where, and why, or how. They end with a question mark and they're trying to get some information. Where are you going this afternoon? What is your favorite movie? Okay, they're getting that information. And then exclamations, you know, these are my favorite ones exclamation sentences or exclamatory sentences they're sometimes called show a lot of emotion and they end with an exclamation point and they're showing lots of feelings so if i say i love tumman elementary i would write an exclamation point because i'm so excited about that if i say i miss you i could use an exclamation point because i'm showing lots of emotion okay so they give you some examples also for the command, they say, go out and play or watch a match to see these awesome features in action. Question, with all of these features, why isn't soccer everyone's favorite sport? Exclamatory, it's amazing that soccer has so many exciting features all in one game. So now you're going to practice writing the different sentence types in a special way. So 
the writing that we're doing this week, we're going to answer this question. How is life in Mexico and Canada similar and different? So we're going to tell some of the ways these places are the same and some of the ways they're different. Those cool, complex details. What you're going to practice right now, this is so fun, you're going to come up with a concluding sentence, a conclusion sentence, a closing sentence for your paragraph telling about how Mexico and Canada are similar and different. You're going to come up with one kind of sentence that's a command. You're going to come up with one that's a question and one that is exclamatory. So you're going to basically come up with three different closing sentences for your paragraph. You're going to come up with one of each kind of sentence and then you're going to choose the one that you like the best and you'll actually get to use it in your writing. So you're going to come up with a command to tell your audience to do something. You're going to come up with a question to ask them something as they finish your paragraph. And you're going to come up with an exclamatory sentence to say something with feeling. Your closing sentence is your last part of your paragraph. So this is kind of tricky because you're doing it backwards. You're thinking about how you're going to end your paragraph before you even write it. But we know the closing sentences and topic sentences are very, very similar. So play a little game with yourself to come up with your three possible closing sentences, making one a command, one a question, and one exclamatory. In your packet, there's also a word bank um, to help you think of some of these cool new words that we've been using this week. We've got for Mexico, honor, flavor, artisan, service jobs. Those are all words we learned in the Mexico section. For Canada, service jobs, bundle up, drill holes. So those are all um, new words that we were talking about in these texts. You can use them if you want. You don't have to, but they're just there to help. And remember, the question we are answering, how is life in Mexico and Canada similar and different? Now it's time to plan your writing to tell how life in Mexico and Canada is similar and different. You're going to come up with your topic sentence, just like always, and then you're going to come up with your three details. But your three details, it's almost like having six details. Because for detail one, you're going to talk about Canada and Mexico. Detail two, you're going to talk about Canada and Mexico. Detail three, you got it. You're going to talk about Canada and Mexico. And then for your conclusion sentence, you're going to pick one of the ones that you just wrote either a command, a question, or an exclamatory sentence. And you're going to choose that one as your conclusion, conclusion sentence um, to wrap it up. Maybe one of the other ones that you wrote could be a good topic sentence. Hmm, that's a choice that you could make as a writer. Let's take a look at some helpful sentence stems that you are welcome to use in your own writing. These are some that I was thinking about. You don't have to use them, but they're there to help you if you're feeling stuck. Mexico and Canada are similar because they both, mm. One way the two countries are different is that in Canada they, mm, but in Mexico they, mm. Did you know that in Mexico they, mm, but in Canada they, mm? All right, so you are going to do those sentences, the commands, the questions, and, and the exclamatory sentence. You're going to think about ways you could wrap up your paragraph, and then you're going to plan your writing. Now, if you want to just jump right into turning your quick outline into a paragraph, go for it. For me, I think I'm probably going to save that last part, my, my final writing part, for tomorrow. Totally up to you. Give me a call if you need help, send me a text, whatever. If you want to show off your writing when you're all done, you know that that's the highlight of my day, getting to read your amazing ideas. Um, so yeah, awesome job. You are doing great, and I can't wait to read what you come up with. Okay, I love you. Way to go. Bye.